NBC will be on the air with the latest war news at the beginning of every program day and night. The British radio heard by NBC reports that the Sultan of one of the little Malay states has handed control of his country right over to the British to make it easier to repel the Japanese. A British advisor will sit with the Sultan of Kelantan from now until the war is all over. The United Press from New York. The United States has banned Germans, Austrians, and Italians from American citizenship until further notice. Judge Marcus Campbell in Brooklyn Federal Court turned down a list of applicants. The court clerk said the instructions were received from the Attorney General's office. The United uh, Press from La Paz, Bolivia. The Bolivian cabinet has decided to adhere to any joint action by American nations. The cabinet adopted a four-point program reaffirming pledges made at the Panama and the Havana conferences. The United Press from Vichy. British planes have blasted the German-occupied French port at Calais in the most savage raid on that city in months. Thirty-seven civilians were killed. Twenty were seriously wounded. Many homes were destroyed. The Associated Press from Manila. A number of new fire stations have been opened up today in thickly settled parts of Manila. All firemen are equipped with steel helmets and gas masks. All civilians are being evacuated from areas near American military installations. We thank the sponsor of this program for relinquishing a portion of his time in order that you might hear the latest news from the NBC Newsroom. The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by Martha Tilton and the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with Don't Ever Leave Me. We have just received this message for our listeners in a telegram from the president of S.C. Johnson & Son, Incorporated, our sponsor. In these serious days, there can be no division of opinion. The United States is at war. We are all ready and eager to do our part. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Glow Coat believe it is in the public interest to continue programs as entertaining as Fibber McGee and Molly. They have a place in national morale. So you can continue to hear Fibber McGee and Molly and still be in touch with latest developments. We have asked the National Broadcasting Company to feel free at any time to cut into our programs with important news flashes and announcements. Signed, H.F. Johnson, Jr. Well, there's an old saying to the effect that the female is more deadly than the male. But around the first of the month, the mail can be pretty deadly, too. And here at 79 Whisper Vista, the postman has just left a stack up, which on the breakfast table reaches halfway up the coffee pot. And it's all for Fibber McGee and Molly. Heavenly days, McGee. Look at these bills. You look at them. I got a letter from my cousin, Nick. Dick. Yeah, you know. Ichabod McGee. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. He was the black sheep of your family, wasn't he? Yeah, complete no good. Ran away when he was 16. Oh? Bummed around the country and started gambling. Won a few hundred bucks and squandered a whole roll on a few acres of scrub farmland and then carelessly discovered oil on it. <laughs> Worthless little pup is now worth four million bucks. Your own brother? Unfortunately, he ain't my own brother anymore. We disowned him in 1926. No, before he discovered the oil, no doubt. <laughs> well, what's he say in his letter? He says, Dear Brother Fibber, Meh, signed Ick, the black sheep. <laughs> I guess Ick ain't in any mood to make up. Well, I for one won't chase after him just because he has money. No, me either. Wonder how I could get him to chase after me. <laughs> hey, what's this postcard? Well, how should I know? It's addressed to you, and I never read your mail. Uh. Anyway, it's just an advertisement. Hey, it isn't either just an advertisement. It's from the Wistful Vista Wholesale Outlet Store. It says, You have been recommended and selected as one of a small list of patrons 
to whom we extend the privilege of purchasing standard merchandise at a 40% discount. Oh. oh, boy. This card will be your identification, not transferable. Yours very truly, signed, Paul, your pal, Peters. Oh. <laughs> Say, I didn't know you had a Paul named Pal Peters. Who is he? And why should he give you 40% discount on anything? Oh, they just do that for a few prominent citizens, for the goodwill. You see, Molly, if they... Oh, come in. Hi, babe. Hello, Skimp. Hello, Mr. Mill. Hi, Billy. What's troubling your pretty little bald head today? <laughs> you know anything about radio, Skimp? Who, me? I'll say I do. Why, sure he does, Mr. Mill. He fixed ours yesterday. Yeah. Now all we have to do to get KPMO is turn the dial to WTL and kick it three times. <laughs> Why, Jas, William? I wanted to get my sister a radio for Christmas. Say, I thought you got her a new one a couple of years ago, Billy. Well, I did, but it's worn out. Oh. She can't oh. get Edwin on it anymore. <laughs> well, if you want... Hey, look, I can get you a radio wholesale, Billy. Forty percent off. How much you want to sink into it? Oh, about fifty bucks. Oh, well, uh, you want one that'll play records? No, my sister hasn't got any records. <laughs> <laughs> you leave the whole thing to me, Billy. Tell Santa Claus it's in the bag. You mean you can get me a 50-buck radio for 30, Skimp? Absolutely. Save you 20 smackers. So if you were thinking of getting me some little inexpensive thing for Christmas, <laughs> you can do a little better now. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, Skimp. How come you get 40% off on radios? What do you mean on radios? I get 40% off on anything. I got connections. I know people in the right places. Oh, I sure don't you forget, Mr. Mills. McGee is a prominent citizen. You betcha. Stand up, dearie, and show Billy how prominent you really are. Well, I'm certainly obliged, Skimp. Want the 30 frog skins now? No, no. Wait till you get the radio. Uh, will you sit down and have a cup of coffee, uh, Billy? No, oh, thanks, babe. Coffee makes me sleepy. Makes you sleepy? That's funny. Keeps most people awake. Not me. I never drink it. So long. <laughs> There's a great actor lost in that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and I doubt if they ever find him. <laughs> Are you going downtown to get his radio right away, McGee? Yeah, I think so. Might want to pick up a few things myself. After all, I haven't got your electric waffle line. Ooh! I haven't got your Christmas present yet. <laughs> oh, I wonder what it's going to be. <laughs> but you can get that later, McGee. I'll go with you today so we can... Oh, dear. Come in. Oh, hello, Mrs. Uppington. Oh, how do you do, my dear? And Miss McGee. Hi, Uppy. <laughs> I was just going downtown to select a new floor lamp, Mrs. McGee. Would you care to go along? Well, now... Hey, I... wait a minute, Uppy. Don't go throwing your dough away now. Let, let me handle this for you. I can get 40% off on any merchandise. Now, wait a minute, McGee. How much you want to pay for a floor lamp, Uppy? Mr. McGee, when I want something, I am not one to count the cost. Oh. With me, money is no object whatsoever. Ooh. I want the best, and I'm perfectly willing to pay for it. But if possible, try and keep it under seven dollars. <laughs> Catch on, McGee. Be as reckless as you like, as long as you're careful. Uh, what kind of a lamp do you want, Abigail? Well, my dear, I rather had in mind one with a marble and bronze base, uh -huh. a fluted gold leaf column, mm. a cluster of five bulbs with an indirect fixture at the top, yeah. a large beige monk's cloth shade, perhaps surmounted by a small jade ornament. Yeah. You had that in mind for seven bucks? Yes. Yes, I did. Would you go to eight fifty if it had Melvin Douglas shinning up the post to turn it on for you? <laughs> as long as you can get it wholesale, Miss McGee, you may even go as high as ten dollars if necessary. Oh. Now, that would amount to uh, uh, six dollars, I believe, with a discount. Yeah. And if I see a nice pair of pliers for about two bits, you want those two, Uppy? Why should she want a pair of pliers, McGee? Well, I hate to see anybody pinching pennies like this with their bare hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Miss McGee, you are so amusing. <laughs> I kill me, too. Oh, he's a car navigator. <laughs> That's what I tell everyone, my dear. I always say Mr. McGee is simply a car. Oh, sure. <laughs> An ace with a short hay. <laughs> The 
King's Men singing Chul. Who said a woodchuck, woodchuck, wood? Would he chuck another woodchuck's wood? If a woodchuck could chuck, he'd chuck good. Book it in a lot So real. Chul, 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 I rule. Chul, I chag, a rack, chul, a barbecue. Every time I see a silly by the wheel, book it in a lot So real. down this memorandum. Now, let's see. I'll get it. Hello? Yeah, this is him speaking. Oh, hi, Mort. Yeah. Huh? No, I never shoot craps much, Mort. <laughs> Pinochle's more... Huh? Oh, trap shooting. <laughs> I thought you were talking baby talk. <laughs> well, I'd get a 12-gauge shotgun if I was you, Mort. That's the best... Hey, wait a minute, Mort. I can get you one wholesale. Oh, dear. Here we go again. Oh, what say, Mort? Sure, 40% off. Okay, you just leave it to me, Mort. You betcha. Okay, Mort. Goodbye, Mort. Huh. I never saw you act as a middleman before, McGee, but man, you're sure putting yourself in the middle. <laughs> oh, well, what's one more little item? Put that down on the list, Molly. 12-gauge shotgun, automatic full choke. Full what? Choke. What does he do? Shoot things and then strangle them? <laughs> Oh, choke means the barrel is kind of made smaller at the end. Now, let's see. One radio, one lamp, one shotgun. One wonders. One wonders what? One wonders what one's getting into. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Laugh if you want it, but 40% off ain't anything to sneer at. Who's laughing? <laughs> What's me? Hey, I wonder if I could get a cocker spaniel down there. Why buy one there? Well, they say a bargain dog never bites. <laughs> 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 Don't you get it, Molly? 40% off? Bargain dog? It ain't funny, McGee. Yeah. I should have made it a chihuahua. Hey, Fibber, Molly. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Can't stop to talk to you now, Harlow. Got to go downtown. Anytime you can't stop to talk to him, dearie, you'd better go downtown. And look for a job. <laughs> oh, well, all right. What you want, Harlow? Look at this swell box of cigars. Mm. Would this make a nice gift, or wouldn't it? Say, them are pretty snarky stogies, Harlow. <laughs> Twenty-five centers. <laughs> I could tell more about them if I... Hey! <laughs> Put those back. These are for a gift. <laughs> Is it somebody special, Mr. Wilcox? I'll say, Mom. It's more of a prize than a gift, really. I'm presenting them to the man who coined the slogan, Your linoleum will be your pride if Johnson's glow coat is applied. Oh, were you having a contest? Well, no, not exactly, but I thought it was pretty good. You see, it implies the whole story of Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Get this, folks. It's the stuff that keeps Wilcox working, you waiting, and us eating. <laughs> I'm serious, Fibber. <laughs> you That's think I'm kidding? <laughs> <laughs> That slogan almost tells the whole story of glow coat. How easy it is to apply. How it dries to a beautiful finish in 20 minutes or less with no rubbing or buffing. And how it keeps your linoleum from cracking, checking, fading, and soiling. 
It saves your nickels and saves your knuckles, and your linoleum never cracks and buckles. Oh, I think it's well worth a box of cigars for that slogan, Mr. Wilson. Yeah. Who's the smart smoker that donated that little hunk of poetic promotion, Harlow? Me? You. You? Yep. Thought of it coming down the street and bought myself a box of cigars as a reward. Oh. Well, it won't keep you any longer, folks. Go on. Boy, does he appreciate him. <laughs> you know, I think it's wonderful, McGee, how he keeps so interested in his job. Yeah, it'd be all right if he kept his enthusiasm to himself, but he's got Billy Mills doing it, too. How do you mean? Well, I saw Billy out with a gal the other night, and was he pouring it on and spreading it around. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Oh, Mayor Latrivia, how do you do, I'm sure? Well, what can we do for you that won't take long, Latrivia? <laughs> oh, nothing, thank you. I was just taking a walk and thought I'd drop in a moment. Oh. As mayor, you know, I like to walk around the city and mingle with the common citizens. Sort of like, um, Harun al-Rashid. Oh, yes. Uh, who's he? <laughs> uh, Harun al-Rashid was an oriental potentate in the Arabian Nights, McGee. Oh, he was, eh? And what did this oriental potato do, Latrivia? <laughs> oh, he mixed with the people and listened to what they were saying so he'd know what was going on among the populace. Didn't you ever read the Arabian Nights? Why, of course not. McGee can't read Arabian. <laughs> Anyway, by the time I get through reading Bringing Up Father and Flash Gordon and Smokey Stover, I'm all wore out. <laughs> That's very amusing. <laughs> In a pathetic sort of way. <laughs> by the way, do you know where I can buy a large globe of the world for my office? Why, sure, La Trivia. I can get you on wholesale. How much you want to pay for a good globe? Oh, it doesn't matter much, McGee. As long as I get a good one, things are happening so fast these days, I like to keep informed. You want a globe with Japan on it, Mr. Mayor? Why, certainly. Well, then you better get one quick. <laughs> yeah, you leave it to me, La Trivia. I'll see that you get a good one cheap. I got connection. Splendid, splendid. Thank you very much. I'll try to return the favor sometime. Hey, how about that job in the city hall you promised me? Oh, did the mayor promise you a job, did well, he? Well, practically. He says he was looking for a smart, level-headed man to look in on the higher-ups in the interests of clean government. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes, yes. The, uh, the window-washing job. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's been filled, McGee, but I'll keep my eyes open for you. A good day. Goodbye, Mr. Mayor. Window washing job. Who does he think I am? He thinks you're the man who wanted the window washing job. <laughs> Let me take that shopping list again, McGee. Yeah. Now what have we? A radio, a floor lamp, a globe, and a shotgun. Yeah. Ah. Civilization in a nutshell. <laughs> How are we going to get all this stuff home? Oh, I imagine they'll deliver it to the different people for it. Well, if they don't, we can stick up a truck driver with a shotgun. Yeah. <laughs> or I could bop him with the floor lamp and run off with the globe. McGee, look who's here, Mr. Wimple. Hello, Mr. Wimple. Hi, Wimp, old man. Hello there, sir. <laughs> Excuse me for walking right in, but my goodness, I haven't seen you for simply weeks. I suppose that's because it's been so rotten out. No, it's because you've been so written out. <laughs> oh, Mrs. <laughs> McGee, I just love a woman who has a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, I love this one myself, Wimple. You go get one of your own. <laughs> Hasn't your wife any sense of humor, Mr. Wimple? Who, sweetie face? Well, yes, in a way she has, Mrs. McGee. But she's more of a practical joker, you might say. Oh, oh, one of those. Yes. I'll never forget the time we were mountain climbing, and she held me over the edge of a cliff by my coat collar. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, but you knew she wouldn't drop you, Mr. Wimple. Oh, of course I knew it, Mrs. McGee. Certainly wasn't her fault that she got bit by a snake just at that minute and had to let go. Oh. <laughs> Heavenly days, Mr. Wimple. How far did you fall? Only a few feet, Mrs. McGee. Fortunately, my pants caught on a bush, and there I was, looking down into a 400-foot canyon, screaming for help and taking pictures like mad with my 2A brownies. How about the wife, Wimple? Was the snake bite serious? Oh, oh indeed it was, Mr. McGee. Oh. Death came within five minutes, and see if they skinned it for a hat band. <laughs> We 
we often think back to that day and have a hearty laugh. <laughs> At least I think back and she laughs. Have you got your Christmas shopping done yet, Mr. Wimple? No, I still have to get a pair of dumbbells with her initials on to give Sweetie Faye. Oh. With a card reading Merry Christmas from the three of us? <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'll buy some for you, Wimple. I can get you some dumbbells wholesale. Oh, 40% dear. off. I wish we had some music with this merry-go-round. Well, I'd certainly appreciate it, Mr. McGee. A bargain really appeals to me these days. Yeah, a guy gets kind of short around Christmas, doesn't he, Wimp? Oh, indeed, he does. I was looking at my darn bank this morning, and it's practically empty. Oh, did you shake it real hard? I didn't have to, Mrs. McGee. Sweetie Face caught me looking at it, and she shook both of us. <laughs> well, thank you ever so much, Mrs. McGee, and do drop over some night. I've told Sweetie Face all about you, and I'm sure she doesn't hate you as much as she says. Goodbye. <laughs> Oh, look at the time it is, McGee. Oh, my gosh. we got to get going before that store closes. Get your hat, Mom. I'm all ready. Get your own hat. You got the list of things? Sure, right here. How about the checkbook? Oh, my checkbook. Oh, my... Oh, where's my check? Oh, I remember. Where is it? Right here in the hall closet. Oh. <sighs> got to straighten out that closet one of these days. <laughs> Martha Tilton singing The Last Time I Saw Paris. The last time I saw Paris, her heart was warm and gay. I heard the laughter of her heart in every street cafe. The last time I saw Paris, her trees were dressed for spring. And lovers walked beneath those trees. And bird song songs to sing I dodged the same old taxi cab That I had dodged for years The chorus of their squeaky horns Was music to my ears The last time I saw Paris Her heart was warm and gay No matter how they changed I remember her that way. I think of happy hours and people who shared them. Old women selling flowers in markets at dawn. Children who applauded punk and beauty in the park. And those who danced at night. And kept their Paris dry Then the town went dark The last time I saw Paris Her heart was warm and gay No matter how they changed her I'll remember Seventy-nine Wistful Vista. The time, three hours later. Oh, home again. Thank goodness. What a horrible expedition. You and your 40% off. I think I'll run upstairs and take off about 40% myself. 50 including my shoes. Yeah. I'm kind of tired, too. Hey, imagine that guy charging me five bucks a piece to deliver all them things. Yeah, and then you didn't get one single item you really wanted. Well, I couldn't help it. It was so dark in that store, I couldn't see what I was buying. Did you hear what he said about exchanging merchandise? Well, you can't blame him for that, Molly. With a big discount like that, he can't afford to keep taking stuff back. How much did all those things cost? Well, I'm going to look at the checkbook. Ooh, 73 bucks. Oh, oh but I'll get that back now, Molly. Soon. You answered, McGee. I couldn't lift the receiver for a bankrupt birdhouse. Okay. Hello? Oh, hi, Mort. Did you get the shotgun? Wasn't it a... Uh-huh. Oh, now, take it easy, Mort. That gun is a genuine antique. Yeah, but but he said... Oh, but look, Mort. Now, don't get excited. That, that, that shotgun was used by Daniel Boone at the Battle of Bull Durham. Or 
a bull quibble. A, well, some kind of bull. But that, that rather more than... I've done my best to get... Hold it, Mort. There's somebody at the door. See who's there with you, Molly. Come in. Now, see here, McGee. What's the idea of sending me that dirty little five-inch globe when I ask for hey, a Hello, thing? Mort. Oh, hold the line a minute. What would you say, La Trivia? He doesn't like the globe you bought him, dearie, oddly enough. I certainly don't. I wanted a large-sized globe, and you send me a ridiculous little five-inch one. <laughs> well, it's a small world, ain't it, La Trivia? <laughs> By George McGee, if you don't... Excuse me, La Trivia, I'm talking to a guy on the phone. Now, look, Mort, I'm sorry I couldn't exactly get you a modern shotgun, but gee whiz, when you get 40% off... Gee, what on earth did you think you were... Be with you in a minute, Uppy, I'm on the phone. Won't you sit down, Abigail, and Mr. Mayor, sit Thank you, no, I want to speak to that husband of yours. So do I. It's unanimous. Yeah, but look, Mort, I went to a lot of trouble buying you that shotgun, and if you don't appreciate... Mr. McGee, talk to that person later. I want to speak to you about that repulsive lamp you sent me. You think that's repulsive? If you could see the globe, he sent me... No, 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 let's all take it easy. I'm sure... But, Mort, you don't get the idea. That gun I bought you is a genuine antique. Well, what if you can't shoot with it? Hang it over the fireplace and let the kids hate hey, him. You call that thing you sent me a radio? You too, Mr. Mills. Get off that phone, McGee. We want to talk Indeed to you. we do. Now, just a minute, folks. Be right with you. Now, listen to reason, What's Mort. What's wrong with I... your lamp, Abigail? What was wrong? The shade doesn't fit. Two sockets were broken. You ought to see my radio, babe. Crystal set with a morning glory horn and headphones. <laughs> How about my gold? My globe, it's so old, it shows New York as Indian territory. Well, it still is. I've seen some scalpers around Times Square. Ah, but more. <laughs> you don't see my side of it, Mort. All I've done I was I wish to... you could see my left. And my radio. Let's have one complaint at a time yes, here. Yes, yes, yes. Let's all be calm. <laughs> all right, Mort. Okay, Mort, if that's the way you feel about it. Oh, Mike I... McGee, about those dumbbells. What dumbbells? <laughs> Are you referring to us, Mr. Winkle? If he is, he's the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> All right, Mort. Okay, Mort, if you feel that way, there's nothing... Hello? Hello? Okay, folks, now just take it easy. What is all this? Hey, hey, you, 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 you get me behind all this. Hey, hey, quiet, everybody. Quiet, 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 now, let's please. consider this calmly, folks. Take your time. Hey, the reason Molly. Oh, hello, everybody. Now what? Gee, I'm glad everybody's here. Hi, Mr. Wilcox. Because I've got great news. Oh. See me before you do any shopping. Huh? I know a place where I can get 40%. Oh, oh, no! Ladies and gentlemen, we know everyone is anxiously awaiting the words of President Roosevelt. In the meantime, the makers of Johnson's Wax have this message for you. America has answered the treacherous attack of the Japanese by declaring war to the victorious end. To ensure our victory, we must turn our dollars into guns and our dimes into bullets. Buy United States defense bonds and stamps at your bank, post office, or savings and loan association. Get them from your newspaper carrier boy or your retail dealer. If you live in Canada, buy Canadian war savings certificates or victory bonds. Don't delay. Act now. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is the National Broadcasting Company. This is Chicago WMAQ. In 10 seconds, it will be 9 p.m. B-U-L-O-V-A, Bulova Watch Time. Bulova, masterpiece of fine watchmaking. WMAQ.